again folks this is brother peter with tidbits from the word wow god is good he is merciful in all his ways and all of his action he is a merciful god he is a god that cares for his children he cares for us psalm 150 we're going to be talking about proverbs chapter one if you want to turn there but let's look at the last sign before we go into Proverbs. It said, let all things praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him in His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with a loud clap and praise Him with the harp. Praise Him with the temple and the dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and the flutes. Praise Him with the loud cymbals. Praise Him with the clashing cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, God is so gracious to us today to allow us to inhabit His earth. This is His earth. He made this earth Himself. That He could actually dwell on it Himself. And, and did, and came and walked in the garden after the first man was made with Adam. We don't know if he walked in the garden before or not and said, this earth is ready for a man. But he walked in the garden. Uh, uh, most of the collection now of Proverbs, where we're going to go, is gathered go during the 10th century. And uh, this is a 2017 uh, year of the century. And uh, they were finalized from 729 to 686 B.C. Now, these Proverbs were put here. Let's look at them. The name of the book expresses its writing style, a proverb. A proverb is Hebrew, meshable, uh, literally is to be like. And we are to... I study these proverbs, to read these proverbs, to digest them, if you please, to eat them with our mind and our heart and put them in sequence so that we can know when we come against something how to compare with that something and how to be used of that something. Uh, the statements made here are comparisons. Most of them are comparisons from good and evil. Or the way of life and the way not of life. Sometimes things aren't evil, but they're not good. And so these comparisons usually form from brief sayings instead of many, many words. Uh, these are brief but vivid statements taken Everyday life, our everyday life is important, how we live it. And we need practical guidelines. And the Proverbs are practical guidelines for successful living. A proverb does not argue its point. It just states it. It does not assume a primary purpose, and it's not explained as a matter of to give a pointed expression, even though I'm kind of the guy that likes pointed expression, to the idea that many of the proverbial maximums should be recognized. A maximum is the end right there. That is it. That's it now. Uh, cut and dried. And so... Uh, not necessarily absolute. Some of them aren't necessary absolutes. You could get by breaking some of them, but you would do much better to follow them. Uh, 
what's stated generally through them is is many many expressions of how to live godly and how to live a comfortable life and how to live a if you please in the middle of turmoil to live in a spiritually relaxed life not all hyper not all up in the air not all strung out but have peace in the pathway of life we can find it in these proverbs our conduct and our lifestyle is is going to meet the goal that God would have it meet if we get it out of his book and the goal that for successful living is written in these 30 little proverbs but along this route we must be careful and follow the safety guidelines of what it says. Just about every single fact in Proverbs is good for relationships, for the mental person, for the person to person, from other persons, and the book of Proverbs actually is a reverence to proper living. When it was written, wisdom and concerning relationship of timeless writing. This, these are timeless writings. Even though they were written back in the 10th century, they're for today. God gave the wisdom to this man, Solomon, even though he walked away from this wisdom himself in his later years, showing us that we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful that when we get to the place, and I've seen it happen in an older man or two, that he got to the place it was a powerful, powerful spiritual preaching, whatever, and hung it all on the coat rack and said, I'm retired, I'm finished, and went into a non-spiritually profitable type of life, and, and run himself into a model. We can do that if we're not careful, we've got to be careful as we get older. Wisdom and relationships, concerning relationships as the nature. Let's watch out for sin and foolishness. Remember the prodigal son. He was still a son. And he went out into the foolishness. And he tried the philosophy of the world. Only to know that he needed to come back to the father where the philosophy was proper and the philosophy was practical and he didn't have to struggle between good and evil he had good before him all the time and whenever evil approached he could tell it and stay away from it the, the Proverbs are a powerful contrast of ideas of wisdom showing us the folly versus evil and death and fidelity versus adultery truth versus falsehood prudence versus rashness prosperity versus poverty <laughs> industry uh, versus indulgence truth of eternal importance set forth 30 little proverbs if you didn't have any other Bible 
these Proverbs will take you to God, to Jesus Christ, and to the place you need to come. But if you just got saved and then had just these Proverbs to go by, you could live pretty much a perfect life. Wisdom, godly living, is the beginning of wisdom. It's more valuable than jewels or wealth. I could have all the jewels in the world and be miserable. I could have all the wealth. In the world. Matter of fact, in our day, this multimillionaire just getting a bunch of guns and shooting a bunch of people said life is futile. All he would have had to have done is somebody say, Sir, if you'll ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and come into your life, he will end all of your misery and your problems. But he didn't do that. Wisdom orientates from God. It's from God. That's where it started. That's where it all started with God. And that's where it originates. Wisdom is valuable to all. To each man, to each woman. To each boy, each girl. To choose the path of wisdom is the thing. The wise are rewarded for their righteousness. And the foolish will reap the consequences of evil deeds. This book, chapter 1 of Proverbs, is an instruction from a father to a son. And 1 and 8 and 9 and 18. Wisdom, the path leading to skillful living. In chapter 1 through chapter 4. And then we see the warning of wisdom. Chapter 1, 8 through 19. We see the call of wisdom. Chapter 1, 20 through 33. We see the rewards of wisdom, chapter 2, one, all the way through 427. If you pause your machine, or back up, or start this one over again, and you can pause it periodically and jot this outline down. This is a worked out outline that's a beautiful outline for the book of Proverbs. It talks about folly. The path that leadeth to death, chapter 5, 1 through 20, uh, all the way up to chapter 7 through 27. A warning against immorality, chapter 5, 1 through 23. A warning against idleness and deception, chapter 6, 1 through 19. The additional warning against Immorality, the great thing of today, immorality. Chapter 6 and verse 20. I got news for you. You cannot turn the television on today without it starting with immorality. You back up to the shows of the 70s, which are on our TVs today, you can go back there and watch them. The suggestive language of that day borderline on the wicked life that is here today permanently. They were suggesting in or continually suggesting in where we are today. And here we are now. The devil very cunningly brought in what we have on TV today. Let's look at the beginning. Chapter 8 and verse 1. A tribute to wisdom. Wow. I did a tribute one time. I was young, not very wise, and uh, not knowing a whole bunch about preachers and everything. I listened to this guy, Adrian Rogers. Didn't know much about him or anything. Didn't know he was the 
champion preacher of the world for the day that he was preaching. And I did a little tribute on here, a little 15-minute thing to Brother Adrian Rogers. And uh, come to find out, here he is, a man, statues of statues and statues about this little fellow. Uh, uh, a man that's done thousands of works with thousands of people. But has a tribute to wisdom. That's kind of like giving a tribute to a man against God. God is wisdom. The origin of wisdom is God. Chapter 8, 1 through 36. The invitation of wisdom. Chapter 9, 1 through 8. Receive it. Number two, the Proverbs of Solomon contrasting wisdom against folly. Chapter 10, 1 through 22 and 16. Another, uh, number two of this same thing would be concerning the wise to the foolish. Contrasting the wise to the foolish. Chapter 10, 1 through 15 to 33. And, and chapter 16 is encouraging godly living. Through 22. And then 20 through 17 through 24, 34 is the sayings of the wise. Wow. <laughs> you want to, listen. Listen, you want to go to school? You want to go from the first grade to the last day of college. You put these 30 Proverbs in your heart, in your mind, in your life. You learn them. You teach them. You preach them. You'll never have to go anywhere but in these 30 Proverbs. They will preach. They will teach from now until eternity and through eternity. They will never be Put, it, put away. These are everlasting proverbs. Wow. Virtuous. Practices. Chapter 22, 17. Virtuous people. 20 through. 24. 1 through 34. Wow. Solomon collected some of Hezekiah's men for purposes of carrying on the gospel. Chapter 25, 1 through 29 and 27. Proverbs about relationships with each other. 25, 1 through 26 and 28. Proverbs about action. 27, 1 through 29, 27. Proverbs about uh, the final appendix of the whole thing. And that is the word of Ega, 31 through 33. The words of Lemuel, 31, 1 through 9. The acrostics about the virtuous woman, chapter 31, 10 through 31. God gave me a virtuous woman. For 54 years now, I've been married to a virtuous woman. And I can honestly say, on a daily basis, she has been virtually perfect as a wife, as a mother, as a godly woman, as a person who cared for other people, as a person who cared for a husband who didn't act like he cared for her for uh, as much as 15 years. 
she kept the whole ball of wax together, was pleasant, was plight, was a woman of Proverbs, was a, was a Proverbs 31 woman, and still is. As I speak right now, she is fixing to go to heaven and fixing to have to leave me here. I'm going to have to muster up not only what God has given me, but take what God has given her that has been, is going to be left in charge of me. And I'm going to have to do for both of us. Said, my son, hear the instruction of your father. And do not forsake the law of your mother. For they will be graceful ornaments on your head and chains about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us show them alive like shield. And the whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us and let us all have a purse, one purse. The evil man walks in these words of chapter 1. But the first part of that is the man to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, to the wise man will hear, increase learning, and men understanding will uh, attain to the counsel and uh, the understood the proverb and the enigma, the words of wise and their riddles. Just the opposite of what I just read about the world. The world I used to live in, the world I used to follow. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wow. Wow. Let's look at this proverb 1, 1 and 1. Brief but vivid statements taken from everyday life and used as a practical guide line for successful living. Chapter 1, 2 through 7. The purpose is that the man or the woman might know wisdom and allow it to govern their lives. To know it, to see it with your eyes, but to act upon it is to know it. We must act upon it if we want to know it. Wow. We must not sacrifice the study and the reading of the Bible for anything else in our life. We must have some time set apart in the day for reading a proverb. Once you get in them, once, once you, you get, you can start with one. You start with one. I, I suggest read that one for seven days. And then start with two. And get to where you can begin to really uh, understand what they're saying. Uh, let's go over to chapter 2. Chapter 2. Verse 1. 
chapter 2. Oh, we're still in 1. Uh, I'm going to read 15 through 19. And these are words I've read many times. To my son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. Talking about the wicked. For their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy of gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Do you know that God has given my wife and I gain? Do we have any money? No. No, we don't have any money. But we have peace. So we don't have any money, but we have prosperity. God did do this for us. He said, live in your means. So as we built the very office that you see right here in this house, so we built it uh, and prayed it in, prayed the wood in, prayed the lumber in. I'm sitting in a $30,000 office that I built for probably less than 13000 labor and material. Because I sculpted around and did the labor myself and had my son help me, one of my sons helped me. And therefore, God has blessed us as poor folks. And we're blessed. We have a need for nothing. We have food in the refrigerator. How much food do you need? <laughs> do you know a, a biscuit and mustard? I still love, had them when I was a kid. I still love them. Potatoes are usually relatively easy to get. Fried potatoes and a biscuit and mustard. Couldn't ask for any more. We can be simple and yet be happy. We don't have to eat high on the hog. We don't have to go out and eat in a restaurant. We don't have to go out and spend fifteen, sixteen dollars for to satisfy our stomach's needs. We can do it with a a potato and a biscuit. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk securely for their own lives. So are their ways of everyone who is greedy of gain. It taketh away the life of its owner. Man. Be careful how much gain you can get all the gain in the world as long as you leave it in God's hands and say, God, you have me to use it. What do you, are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? Do you believe what God said is true? Do you, do you witness daily? You know, the Bible said that when a man goes to heaven, if he's going to heaven, he's going to go in there bringing in his sheaves bringing in the sheaves. I read a thing last night about a man that was accounted. He never in his whole life he passed out tracks his whole life and never knew this particular man never knew one person that got saved through his passing out the tracks. And the calculation comes down to the end of it to where he had a hundred and something thousand people that he was responsible for. A few years back, we had a business. 
At the end of the day, whatever I had in dollar bills, one dollar bills, I took and I put them in tracks like this, dollar bill in that track. And I took those tracks in the morning to West Side, Atlanta, when I go to an auction and pass them out. God would give me buys at the auction like nobody ever saw. Did you know that I have took before the biggest box truck that you can rent from one of the rental places? And when I left the dock, I had the truck full to the tailgate. And some days didn't spend one dime. God would have people buy stuff that they couldn't take. And they'd say, hey, Pete, you want this? The guy that bought books, hey, Pete, I, I bought 3,000 books today and I only wanted 20. You want the rest? <laughs> I load the truck down. The lady came in that bought dolls. She said, I only wanted $1 out of that whole box and there's 110 dolls. She got one, she gave me 109. I help people load, I help people on the dock, I help people do things, and they just gave me, gave me, gave me. I'd load a truck. And the last, the last bid, the last bid would be uh, almost enough stuff to fill the truck by itself, and I could buy it for $10. It was going to go in the dumpster if it wasn't bought. And I'd buy it and load my truck with it. And come home and haven't spent hardly pennies. Spent more money getting there and coming home than I did. And God blessed that. And that's where those dollar bills came from. To be able to put in there. Was that business I had prosperous financially to make me something? No. I passed on my good fortune to others that they may have cheap furniture and cheap stuff. I could sell a couch for ten dollars, twelve dollars, just retrieve my wear and tear for the day. And give poor folks a, a good deal. Listen, these proverbs are something to live by. If you treat people the way God would treat people, God will treat you the way you treat people. You treat people adversely, you're bound to end up adverse. Well, our time's come and gone. We've gone three minutes over our, our time. But it's good, been good being with you today, and we'll see you on the next one. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. Bye-bye.